Vagrajika Khalsa, Vagrajiki Fateh, thank you for joining today's webinar hosted by the Sikh Research Institute. This webinar will begin with a 40 minute moderated discussion between our presenters, after which we will have 40 minutes of Q&A from the audience. So please drop your questions in the chat box and be sure to include your name and city. Now I would like to introduce you to today's panelists. First, we have Inikor. Inikor is the creative director at the Sikh Research Institute. She's an esteemed and passionate author, poet, and painter. Recently, she broadened her creative artistry into publishing a children's book series, Journey with the Gurus, that is inspired by the life and teachings of Guru Nanak Sahib. She's also passionately involved in transcreating Shabad and the writings of Bhai Veer Singh. Today, she resides in Fairfield, Connecticut, USA, and continues to bring multifaceted perspectives to her work. Dr. Nikki Ganender Gaur Singh is the Crawford Professor and Chair of the Department of Religious Studies at Colby College in the United States. She has published extensively in the field of Sikh studies. Her books include Cosmic Symphony, The Early and Later Poems of Bhaivir Singh, Birth of the Khalsa, and Feminine Principle in the Sikh Vision of the Transcendent, among many others. She came to America to attend a girls prep school in Virginia, got her BA from Wellesley College, MA from the University of Pennsylvania, and her PhD from Temple University. And lastly, we have Surinder Singh. Surinder Singh is, is an active member of the Sikh community in Southern California. Based in Los Angeles, he is an avid student of Gurbani and Gurmat literature. He has taught Gurbani courses for adults for over 19 years, at the local Gurdwara and has spoken at various other Sikh events and programs in the region. Professionally, Surinder is a practicing CPA and has managed his own firm for the past 31 years. Please welcome today's presenters. Okay. It is Ashley such a privilege and a joy to be with uh, you, Nikki Ji and Surinder Ji, on the birth anniversary of Paisa Paivir Singh Ji, who I refer to and call reverently as Pitaji. So if you see that being, you know, me call it going, calling him Pitaji, it's because of my relationship, which has grown through the years. So, um, you know, we had this wonderful introduction uh, from Manvinder, about you, Nikki, and Surinderji, and both of your knowledge of Paivir Singh Ji's work. You, Nikki, particularly, you actually have brought his fragrance to the West. You're the one who has translated his work. You are the one who teaches his work in colleges around the United States. And you are effect taking that fragrance to a much higher level. Sundarji, you bring that fragrance to us, to within the community, to within the sex. You teach that. You run book clubs. You do, you know, all sorts of things to bring that work together for him, to bring, take that fragrance out. So I have these two incredible people who are, who revere his work as much as I do. So I want to begin with you, Nikki. Well, I read your essay, um, the essay of Paivir Singh, Local Poet, Global Resource. It's a dense piece, but a wonderful piece. I would love for you to share with us, because in there you say, you write that there are three currents or three themes that emerge from his poetry. And I'd like you to speak to those three themes, but without me having to go to my thesaurus because honestly when i was reading that essay the thesaurus was right next to me so if you could talk to that about that to us i would really appreciate it thank you thank you inni manvinda lovely to be with you surinder too um first of all mubarak to us all mubarak to inni ji for her you know for pitaji's birthday and for us all because this is a wonderful legacy that we have inherited and i'm very glad we are celebrating it together his birth anniversary by Veer Singh's. um i do like your title the fragrance you know how by Veer Singh's fragrance travels through the centuries and i just want us to take a second and think about fragrance because it's very important it's a sense it's 
delicate. It goes everywhere, does not make any differences of society, caste, class, gender. It's a very kind of a universal, what should I say, a process, a motion, and it is cognitive, it is intellectual. And I think it's one of my favorite verses from the Guru Granth Sahib is, Rasiya hove muskaka tab phool pachane. Only the person who enjoys the fragrance knows the rose. So knowledge and this enjoyment is very, very integ integral, connected. And you put this in your title. And that's what our I hope our um, next hour or so is all about. Now, you asked me about, um, actually, I don't go around colleges. I've just stuck to my one college, Colby College, where I have been for the last 33 years, and I enjoy it very much. And my students read Five Years Sing. And as you know, one of them came over uh, in one of the conferences that you had organized. So they're really, these are American students um, who I have. Uh, I wish I had more um, Sikh, ethnically Punjabi students, but Colby is becoming more diverse in New England. So hopefully in the next few years, we will. But the students are greatly inspired. They really are by Pai Veer Singh's poetry. And instead of just the three that you mentioned, that you read in my recent article, I actually find seven different aspects that are extremely crucial for our modern world. His poetry has phenomenal resonance for our contemporary society, whether we are in the diaspora, whether we are back in the Punjab, it really speaks at a very, very particular level and at the same time, a very universal level. So what are those seven? And I will go through them quickly. I don't want to take too much time. Now, the first one is really, it's um, important for our identity for our personal and collective identity. Who are we? We are Punjabis. So the language itself, you know, especially I've been in the West since I was 14. What gave me this love for, what gave me my Punjabi-ness? It was really, I'm, it, it was really Pai Veer Singh, that poetry, the simplicity of it. Where do I remember my grandmother, my mother, my parents, my community? It's the language. So it's really, really, it kind of connects us, gives me who I am, my selfhood through his works. That's number one. Two, I really started with him as to understand Guru Nanak, to understand the Sikh scripture. I was working on my PhD, um, and that's when I really got into Pai Veer Singh, and it was such a reservoir. And he's an exegete. To understand the Guru Granth Sahib, to understand the Bani of the Gurus, he gives us. He gives us theology, ethics, morality, uh, aesthetics, you name it all. But I think that's Surinder's uh, area, so I will leave it there. Uh, but he has been very important. That's all my work has been. My feminine principle was really looking at how he's a hermeneut of Sikh scripture. That's what I have been doing with Pai Vaish Singh. Other aspects. Number three his feminist act, feminist appreciation, his feminist being, um, to be a woman today in the West or anywhere, you know, this kind of sexism and gender bias, he really overturns it. Just see how many female protagonists there are for his novels, for his poetry, and women are authentic subjects. You know, these are not kind of partial or kind of, uh, you know, used, for the male's knowledge or anything. They know, they take the mystical journeys, they fight wars, they think, they question, they question, and they come up with radically new ways of being in the world. So from, from a feminist angle, he's very, very crucial. Four, our world is so damn divided and polarized and dangerously, conf all over we have conflicts. What do we need? Love. And Pai Veer Singh's poetry brings out that dimension of love. Love personally, love spiritually, love romantically, love for nature. It's love that he speaks. And everywhere, whether it's through our own gurus uh, or Radha Krishna or Sasi Punnu, he really does not make these, oh, this is Muslim, this is Hindu, this is Sikh. These are all, all kind of coming together, very pluralistic vision and really shows us it's not my love is better than your love. It's love, love 
transcends all divisions and polarities and opens us up to embrace the world. So that's my fourth point. Number five is the importance of art, art. Again, religion can be divisive. My religion, your religion, and just think of it, whenever there is any kind of race, people are uh, victimizing others, any kind of um, people want to show their hatred for others, what do they destroy? It's works of art. And Paivir Singh has so many works where he really addresses the issue, how art is, it is neither Hindu nor Muslim nor Sikh, it is our our art, and we can go into some of his poetry later on. But I want you to keep that cool, that in today's world, we really need art. And as Tolstoy said, it creates a community. The writer writes, how are we coming together today? It's creating a community. Paivir Singh is creating a community because of a certain poem we read, a certain film we see. So his plays, so this is what brings us together. So art has a very, it has a spiritual, it has a social function. And he, as an artist himself, I think he's top notch artist. He brings out the significance of art. So that's very important to me. Number six is his emphasis on the body, senses. And that's something the Sikh world, I'm afraid, always kind of creates a division. We have faith. We believe, we, we are attuned at the mental level. We cannot do any of that unless we have our body, unless we have our senses, unless we smell the rose, we cannot know the rose. And so this, the, 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 um, the sensuousness, the palpability, the tangibility that, he, that his poetry does is really phenomenal. It, 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 it really does something to our bodies. And I think that's the beauty. And he, he really, and like the gurus too, that's what I've been doing with Guru Nanak. And my latest book is going to be on the aesthetics of Guru Nanak because it's, they, they, they give such primacy to the body, to the senses, because without it, this is Kaya Har Mandar. You know, this is the body is the house of the divine one. And by Singh's poem after poem, Tur Andar, Tur Andar, you know, that's where the, which is this spiritual reservoir. And you call this body bad or woman or caste or class, it really has a lot to address at the metaphysical, social, spiritual level. And the final point is his um, sensitivity for nature. Our world, again, just think, what are we doing with our planet today? We are trashing it. We don't care about nature. I mean, you know, everywhere it's it's we realize the next uh, what are we leaving for our generation for our next generation? We have really, really ruined our our um, atmosphere, our lakes. And so by Singh gives voice to nature. And if, if we could only see how, you know, if you read his poetry, every bit, the tree, the rose, um, the lake, they speak, they have a voice. And I think uh, he really makes us very sensitive towards the environment and brings us that ecological sensitivity that we really need in our contemporary society. So I could go on and on, but I will leave here. Wow. You know, you've encapsulated every so much of what, um, what I feel when I read his poetry. More often than not, I end up crying. And I'm not quite sure why I'm crying, but something within me moves so greatly. And I think it's that voice which you speak about when he gives a voice to that lake, when he gives that voice to uh, the water, uh, you know, to the rose. It is that pull that speaks to us. And now, um, and I go to you. Is, Indy, can I just read one little poem? Because it really just, it's really, really beautiful. It's from Jeevan Kihe. You know, just to see how he he does the, um, you know, how 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 nature is expressed. Chanda akashan David firda. You know, this is this is uh, the moon is up in the skies, roaming around, wandering around. Jalvich chatti mare. Jalvich, you know, the lake is down below. Chatti, you know, I mean, how can one translate that? Just has a little peek at the at the waters below. Jal nirmal us jaffi paake apne vich utare. 
Now, it's just so beautiful. It just as you said, it makes you cry. It one has tears coming down, one's rolling down their cheeks, you know. Jal nirmal us jaffi paake. Here is the water down below. Jaffi embraces embraces the moon up there and brings it close to us. Just think all the all the embraces our mothers and grandmothers have given to us. And this kind of so how can we mistreat our waters? How can we pollute our seas? How can we throw all that rubbish there when this is this is what he's giving voice and giving the kind of personifying nature? It's not romantic nature. There's more to his uh, attitude towards nature. So you're very right. So anyway, sorry. So no, no, you don't have to apologize at all. I mean, apologize. this is what it is. You know, this is what happens when lovers of literature, literature of particularly of the poet or the author or, or the the persona, the person who we're speaking about get together. It's actually a tumbling of emotions, one after the other, because each one of us feels him in a in different ways and that's that magnitude which is coming it's wave upon wave and you know Surinderji you you te teach um, Petaji's where the Chamatkars and you know Nikki mentioned about the Gurbani aspect of it and I know in my own life like uh, as you had mentioned that he made a profound difference in your life honestly and Nikki you also mentioned that you look at his work when you to get to know to Guru Nanak sir. Actually, I fell in love with Pacha through Pai Bir Singh. He made it real for me. It was like I was on this magical journey and I was there with, with this whole, in this whole process. So Surinderji, you know, we have the Asht Guru Chamatkar, we have Guru Nanak Chamatkar, we have Kalgidhar Chamatkar, we have Guru Ash Chamatkar. And there are so many other of his books, but right now I just want you to focus on the Chamatkars. Are these just mere Sakhis? Because a lot of people tell the Sakhis. What is it that this is actually not a Sakhi? Yes, it is a Sakhi, but there's something more. What is that more that is in there? So share with us. Thank you, Iniji, and thank you, Nikiji. You've spoken so well on his life and brought on a broad perspective, you know, and thank you for having me here. Yeah, um, he was truly a saint poet, you know, Sant Kavi San, you know. I mean, um, and as you just mentioned, Ki Chamatkar, the series, he, it's just not Saki, it's the darshan of his Guru Nanak soul. Atma de darshan karande hain tonu Guru Nanak de. So it's not where he was born or his life later on when he settles down in Kartarpur or something like that. When you start reading Guru Nanak Chamatkar, I truly feel when I first time when I read it was like Sakyat, I can see him, you know, I can touch him. I can, I can, I can touch his face, I can touch his feet, I can touch his body, I can touch his soul. And uh, not only touching his soul, but I also feel that in the Chamatkar series, he brings out the Gurbani, the aspect which, and he relates to that of Guruji's life in every aspect of whatever, whatever chapter you, leave, you read, you know. So for example, if you read his childhood part wala chapter in, in Guru Nanak Chamatkar, he, he, he will bring out the aspect of his childhood and the nature around him. And, and truly, when you read it, though, you feel like you're there. It's like a film running in front of you. You know, you, you, you can see the trees. You can see the, 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 his friends around him. You can see Nanki there. You can see his taking 20 rupees from his father and such a soda karun jandehan, you know, and what happens when he comes back. He brings that, that the fearful face when he, he's not, he's, he doesn't face his father that night, you know. So no, Guru Nanak Chamatkar is not just about Sakhis, you know. Yes, there are Sakhis there. Yes, there are storytelling there. But Guru Nanak Chamatkar is really giving darshan to Guru Nanak's soul. Now the Atma the darshan karandehan. And whoever reads it, Didi, will get moved. There is no question. There are, and there are some chapters, obviously, like when he comes back from Edudasi the first time, Pyare da Pyara, there are always certain chapters in there that are way, you know, extremely moving and it stays with you. 
And these aspects that he has created together from different sources like Surya Prakash and other stuff though, and his own imagination that comes through. But Gurbani becomes a central element in Guru Nanak Chamatkar and Kalgidhar Chamatkar also. You know, he brings in the Shabad, he brings it the musical aspect. So many times he will use words like Fir Garajdi Awaz Al Kirtan Hoya, Fir Rag Malhar De Fir Garajdi Awaz Nal Malhar Al Apya Gya. And and somebody like myself who has been a student and a teacher of Gurmat Singhit, also I relate to it probably more than a lot of other people do. And I can see that music coming through from Mardana's Rabab, you know, and um, Guru Nanak Chamatkar and Kalgitar Chamatkar. And then when you read Kalgitar Chamatkar, Didi, you will see the difference between the two souls, you know, Atma Devich. Ek bala pritam hain, jede patna vich janam hunda and the different perspective of Kalgitar Pasha, the Kalgitar Pita, the janam, or ek taraf Guru Nanak Dev Ji, you know, the, uh, the other side, how these personalities that he develops, you know, and truly when you read them, you feel they're next to you. you. When you read them, you feel ki una de, una de, to, you have you've touched them. He touches you in everywhere, you know, and it has a profound effect on you, long-term profound effect. And maybe when you first time, when you read the Chamatkar series, you might, because the language there and many, many of us are not familiar with this, with his literary Punjabi, you know, so sometimes you have to read a chapter more than once, you know, to, to really get the end. I probably have read some chapters maybe multiple times. Every time I read it and I take a yellow highlighter, I've kept two copies, a highlight was the Alagrakhiwi, so that I, I don't touch them. Then I keep my notes there to speak in the class and everything. And sometimes he will bring in Shabbas from Gurgan Sahib Ji, which, which are there, which, which especially. You know, Jagannath Feriwala chapter, for example, where he brings in the Darwala Shabad, you know, when these 40 swordsmen are dancing around. And, and truly, when you read that chapter, you feel ki really what, what is fear, you know. And he explains what fear is. Fear ki. And then Gurbani Des Abnal, and he explains what fear is and what he explains it to Mardana, you know. So, Iniji, it's, 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 yes, it's Sakhis, but... Uh, it's like a movie that 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 guy and the movie is not just the movie that the scenes that come though it touches your heart it goes inside of you it it and 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 you really truly want to read about gurnanak dev ji's bani's more because he brings it so much of gurbani into his storytelling sessions though he tonu gurbani nal vi connect karwa dende he connects you with the gurbani he connects you with the history he connects you with the so beautifully explained nature around it, the conversations that takes place with Pai Mardana, and also the conversation that takes place in the background of the people that he's going to meet. word uh, I, 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 I really do not have anything, any word to describe. If it gunge di mithyai, you know, unless you 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 you, you, you do it, then you find out how. Thank you, Surinder. You know what really, I mean, and I consider myself an outsider because I came to, I grew up with biblical stories and so I didn't know the Sakhis. So when I came to Guru Nanak Chamatkar, it was, was with fresh eyes, with very little knowledge of Punjabi. But what I really appreciated there was the way he opens up and talks about what Nam is, when he explains it to the Brahman, is Nam just chanting? And he says, he goes on, yes, no, it's not chanting, it's this. And then the Brahman says, okay, so I got it wrong. So Nam is not chanting. And then he goes back and corrects. No, Nam is, Nam is chanting as well. That's the first step. But then how do you bring it inside? It is that for me, it is the way he walks us through the principles of Gurbani. Absolutely. That is to me what I love about that work, his work, is he brings me much closer to the principles of Barney, of Gurbani and breaks them down so that I can understand that. I get it. It's like, okay, I get it. Because, you know, the mind is okay this and then this and this that walks through he does that 
for me. And honestly, it's changed my life. It really has. You know, Nikki, you... And if I may add here, you both are saying he's bringing you closer to Bani. Could not agree more with you guys, you know, I, as I said. But also we need to keep in mind at the same time, Paivir Singh also stretches us beyond. You know, like I, you read his poems. It's just not the Sikh gurus. You know, it's, no. it's uh, the Islamic world. It's the Hindu world. Not only that, the Bible. You just mentioned the yes. you know, uh, biblical stories. He has Yusuf's coat. You know, the stars are shining and so forth in the lake. What are they shining off? Joseph's brilliant coat, colorful coat. You know, you need to know Genesis, where where his uh, where his illusions are coming from. So he's a brilliant mind. He's, he's such an intellectual that he's giving us this closer and closer, and yet bringing us, stretching us, our imagination and our uh, creativity, much bringing us to a much larger horizon. And you get a taste of into the second part of Guru Nanak Chamatkar, that towards the end, where there's a chapter called Sapte Vadda Sat Guru Nanak, where, where, where he really compares, you know, with, with Buddhism, with, 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 with and, and his depth of knowledge and about, about all other religions and, and where we are versus what we say, you know, Islam Nal, Hinduism Nal, Jain Mat Nal. Um, it shows depth of, of knowledge of other religions, you know, also in India. I totally understand what you're saying, Nikiji. I absolutely 100% agree with you. You, you have to read him. You, you, have to, you have to take that first step, you know. So. so there's a vastness which he brings into each of his because he stretches the mind. I mean, I remember when I was translating Preet Veena, I was just like, who thinks like this? You know, that form of poetry was was Dante, was something which I had read in the classical. And here I was reading it in, in Punjabi and, you know, with Pitaji. And it was actually, it's so romantic and yet so spiritual, both sides. And you're literally, I was like, ah, who writes like this? And you fall in love with the with the words, with, with the construction of the sentences and everything. And... To look at life like that, that sensitivity of the way, particularly in Preet Veena, and he writes about it's a very it's about a relationship, and he writes a lot about a relationship and what Nikki you had mentioned also about love, and then I want to go back actually to Nikki what you began with that you read from the book What Is Life, um, Jeevan Ki Hai, because so, I was think all of us at this point in time, at some point in time in our lives. Ask that question, what is life? And especially, especially you know, with the pandemic, you know, yes. it's going on. We have time, we don't go out. What means the most to me? Who am right. I? What am I? I mean, this is this is kind of a perennial question. You know, Plato asked it, the Upanishads ask it, you know. Here is uh here is but but what, what amazes me about Pai Vir Singh is that it's a woman. Yes. She leaves the house. She questions. So it's. Uh, I have a whole chapter on that. You know, just analyzing the poem as an as Sikh existentialism. How Sikh existentialism is illustrated in this poem, and it's really a very, very, very significant, very, very philosophical poem, because she goes, "Who am I?" She's feeling. She does this anxiety that we have. I mean, you read Heidegger and so forth. You know, we are humans. We are not gods, and we are not stones. So to be human is to have that anxiety. It is a, we live, a, if we didn't, we would not be humans. And so uh, what is this anxiety? How do we overcome it? And he brings, uh, just as uh, Surinder Veer has been saying, um, the Guru's word. You know, it's this kind of this duality when we don't see ourselves one with the other. And that that's why that uh, it's in that opening, um, uh, you know, the one where I read, you know, the stars are up there, the moon is up there and the lake is down there. These are not two divided worlds. These are coming, I mean, they reach for each other. This reaching out to one other, that's very important. And I think that's that whole notion of home, ego, I'm not, I am who I am and you are somebody else. 
So he really brings, it's really Guru Nanak's philosophy that the ego is at the heart of this anxiety. And once we get rid of it, and he shows it through the woman, she goes to the lake, she leaves her house. I mean, that's very important to think about it. You know, when do women have that um, freedom to leave their chores and leave their families and so forth and think about themselves. We are so busy. Just think about ourselves even today. We live in a very mechanical time. I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. Where is the luxury? Who am I? What am I? What is life all about? And then she goes to the lake and she sees the lake is all calm and beautiful, but she isn't. So she sees herself as really different and a total contrast. And, and, and he presents her gestures. She's looking up and down. Her eyes are going like this. You know, she, he really portrays how her mental anxiety is reflected in her body, in her facial expression. She's pale, right? Andevargi, zardi, zardi, you know, like she's yellow, like of that egg. You know, he really, the, the analogies that he uses are quite phenomenal. And so you see her going through all that pain and angst. But she comes to this lake every time. She sees a little bit. She sees a little bit. And then at the ultimately, she sees the blossoms. So, so it's kind of she sees what, what she's really experiencing is this kind of growth. You know, there, there's nothing on the lake. And then there are little buds. Then they grow. Then they grow up. And then there is this keda. And that's when she sees the blossoms, she kind of realizes she is one with the blossoms, keda, keda, hoi, ape, you know, the blossom, she becomes a blossom herself. So she learns from nature. So nature becomes kind of the uh, intellectual source, her metaphysical kind of awakening. And I think the last words in the poem are um, that, uh, if I may, uh, what is it? Sutta keda, keda, udha jagaya, kede rogu jamaya. You know, so whatever is, so we all have the joy in us. And that's what Guru Nanak says too. This is, to me, this is Sikh scripture. The joy is here. The ecstasy is here. But something is close, has closed it off. And that's our individuality. It's our selfishness. I want this. And we do all that. I want money. I want this. I So it's running after these egoistical pursuits that we really miss what is deep inside. And I think he's showing that he's kind of through his poem, poem after poem, exegesis after exegesis. It's really the basic. We are joy. It's the joy is here. How do we open up? How do we become that blossom? Keda, keda, you know, and it's and, and, and that poem really is, people should read it. I reread it and I want to thank Inni. I literally sorry to admit, but I had not read it in 30 years and I reread it last night and I felt like the little young youthful person I was once upon a time. He does that even at our age and so forth. It's the same emotions that he brings out. So, I mean, I could go on with this poem and, but anyway. So uh, yeah. how does he do that? How, it, how does he do that? That all of a sudden, you know, in Preet Veena, when I'm reading it, I'm actually that, that woman sitting in that lake and I'm feeling those pangs, like I'm there. It's through his writing, like you say, you became youthful. You became that. You how 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 does a poet do that? How does he <laughs> enable one to feel right there that this is happening to them, and it's not the other? It's like me. I I am sitting on that lake. What is that? That I'm, I'm sure there is a literary word, Nikki, or there is something there to be able to transport a reader to that level. That's a really, really good question. And that, I mean, if I were to think of a philosopher, it's uh, Tolstoy who said the artist is infected. You know, it's like giving a disease. You become contagious and you pass it on to the other, to the reader. So he has something within him, which he's passing it on. And the more, so I would say with Pai Veer Singh, you know, because I've been kind of thinking about him all these years. One is his poetic genius. You know, he just has it the language that he uses, simple language, chatti, chatti, you know, like Mari, you know, uh, the, the moon kind of has a little peak at the lake. It's a simplicity of the words. This is not using, he's not doing, uh, uh, Surinder said it very beautifully earlier, you know, he's not, they didn't care about anything. They, they 
it came from within him and that's what he's writing and so so i think it is his sensitivity to language to his vastness as we said you know his he's read so much so he has images left and right at his fingertips and three it's his philosophy because what you see ultimately this woman's journey is what psychologists say what upanishads say you know how she goes from this world of dualism and dualities and so forth there's a transition he really paves through her five uh, journeys to the lake she evolves she progresses so it's a very it's a very structured so it looks you know so it's um it's a very crafted work of art so she starts out there full of questions then she kind of starts going into that semi conscious world you know how the ego starts to break and she's like oh there are two moons there's a moon up there and the moon down here and so forth so that rational logical world begins to crack open and then she falls asleep remember when she goes and falls and it's a sunny sunny day bright and she so she kind of goes into her unconscious world and then after that unconscious world she sees that totality with the world and this is really the world of consciousness semi consciousness unconsciousness to a full consciousness a totality that bliss whatever we want to say so this also so also that kind of world that you hear from the upanishads but then there's also that world coming from the islamic world zahir batan come together you know what is external this is all sufi sufi approach to life and living you know so what is there are esoteric teachings there's something there and exoteric and with her at that moment the deep inside and the outside become one so i think you know your question is absolutely brilliant you know what happens here it's really hard to say because it's happening it at so many different levels mm. it's so it's artistic it's psychological it's philosophical yeah it's poetic it's language it's it's just, it's that's a miracle man if there is magic ma art and these these artists these poets reach that and that's what i find with the guru granth sahib too my first book was when i was an undergraduate at wellesley college that was my senior thesis physics and metaphysics of the guru granth sahib and that was and that thesis that topic still resonates in my mind after all these years whatever i do it's the same thing how is this sophisticated complex philosophy doctrines rendered so beautifully so artistically that that was by physics i meant art the analogies the alliteration assonance consonance and by metaphysics i meant the philosophy what is beyond the transcendent the divine the all pervasive reality how is that expressed through the poetry and i remember my teacher you know she was a christian scholar there was nobody to teach me physicism at that point and she would say nikki physics means the you know the pages and the book and so it it will not go as a title and i said no professor maori i want it i want physics and metaphysics and i think that physical that elemental that body and the deeply spiritual the transcendent coming together that's what the gurus gave us and pai veer singh keeping on their legacy does that and brings us as you say closer and takes us farther and farther vaster and vaster dimensions yep you. you know there's one aspect of um pedaji which is not really that well known and that is and that i discovered actually on my uh, when i was reading kamdi kalai and i saw his introduction chapter on gurmat sang on on how to sing which notes to play for each of his poetry and i was astounded and i sent it to um to a person who studies music and i you know gurmat sangeet and he and he says we've never seen something he had never seen something like this so surinder ji this part of pai sat pai veer singh ji peta ji of his deep knowledge of music absolutely uh, what where is 
that's, you know, why is that not being studied? I mean, this gentleman who I sent it to, he said this chapter alone, I mean, with, with the annotation and the, what all was there, he said, I've never seen anything like this in my 15 years of study. So speak to that, please. Yeah, absolutely. And um, before I speak on that, I just want to add what Nikiji was saying, this important thing, though, is, is that in Gurbani, Nikki ji, the thing is the person who gets connected, jade jud jande na, jade, one who gets connected with the Atal Purak, the knowledge, phir khud ba khud, jade, the, the, the knowledge just naturally enters your heart. I just want to make sure we all get away. So, sunya deep lo patal hai, handi. Sunya tartaval akas hai. So, he, he was connected. He was, and, and if you read Rana Sura Singh, which we've all read, you know, and especially Udari Wala chapter or Utari Wala chapter, when the when the angel, you know, picks the, you know, the Rajkor, the hand and, and takes her to different khands, looks like Paisab had been to all the khands and everything. I just want to, I just want to stress a point here that people who, who get connected and people who become one with him, knowledge by knowledge naturally everything physics there metaphysics there whatever it is it comes the gurus never went to any school kabir never went to any school you know gunanaji ji never entered any music school you know and he was the biggest musician of of, of ever you know coming back to paisa pai wasting ji and i i wish i mean i wish i wish i was there when he was there in the body form when i wish maybe his voice must have been so Beautifully sung, jo apne gande hone jado. But it's amazing when the music definitely. Let me just start off with saying how much he has written on this matter and, and his 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 hold on this mu music by the chapter. He, uh, you know, there is a dictionary that he wrote on Sri uh, Guru Sahib Kosh, which is the um, which is the dictionary he actually made his grandfather's dictionary better. So when you have Kosh brahi, you know, Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj. And towards the end of that, and you can you can even look it up yourself later on. There is a whole like almost hundred pages written on music. How is Gurmat Singh different than us? What is music? What is the connection between spirituality and music? And then he has a big commentary on Ragmala. He goes in. Itni, I have never seen this depth anywhere. Even from musicologists, I have never seen that. And I have been learning music since very young age in, in, in Bengal, got introduced to Rabindra Sangeet at a very, very, very early age. Um, he talks about different Shiv Mat da Ragmala Kediya, you know, Hanuman Mat Di Kediya, and how is our different Ragmala is there. Then the, the, but the best article I think he has ever written on, on music is one that is published in Khalta Track Society and Khalsa Samachar also is the is an article called uh, um, Ragan Di Tasir, which if anybody wants to read it, I have the copy of, a PDF copy of that. Whereby he connects the any he in Didi he has diagrams in that in that in that he, he 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 draws a diagram between what is Nad, what is Anahat Nad, what is Shabad, how does Shabad connects with Anahat Nad? And I can relate to it more because I teach and I learn. I'm a student and a teacher, both of music since a very early age. I understand the rags, how the feelings is, and what difference between Dev Gandhari and Sri and Kalyan and stuff, you know. And I could relate to it much more than probably other people will be able to relate to it. And if that is not enough, if you really want to understand what Kirtan is, and even to this date, when I have to define what Kirtan is, I go to Pai Tandaji Saki in Gurnana Chamatkar, where Paisa really defines when there's a conversation that takes place between Pai Tand Chandaji, Indra Sen, Gurnanak Devji and Mardana, all four of them. Sometimes two of them together, sometimes all four together on what is Kirtan and what is Raag? What is Raag must? What is Kirtan must? What is just being involved in music? What happens to that music when Shabad comes in? You know, his his knowledge about music, his 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 pucker on music, his and he brings that everywhere. 
there is a chapter in i remember in kalgidhar chamatkar whereby this uh, vaishnavi sadhu visits from ujjain who goes to he has a certain picture of uh, of a fakir you know of 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 a guru he thinks that you know, kapde paaye hone dusre mahalle baithe hone in kitre fakiran di and when he sees the kalgidhar pita on a horse you know or lagai hui kalgi te shikar to wapas aaye and and when he sees him doing kirtan the next day in yasadi war and how beautifully that chapter will bring tears to your eyes when you read it mentions the shabad the rag and i am like i am and and i believe personally though you cannot connect connected with the shabad unless you know the musical aspect and in that article of the shabad de paav te rag di taaseer vich he explains that how certain shabads found themselves in three how certain shabads were found itself under devgandhari and not under kalyan but under bihagada you know um and his depth of understanding and more than didi his depth of understanding his his connectivity to a kalpur you know he, he was a connected soul they and and if you read especially on the music a pai chanda ji di saaki and also the jede khand jede han jede how the music and 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 look at the chapter in rana sura singh especially udari wale chapter the when the lady reaches the taram gyan khand and do bachari puchti hai ki pahunch gaye hai sach khand to kehnde nahi kehnde itna celestial music hai this is not sach khand kehnde nahi hai gyan khandi wale sach khand nahi hai to main ki kawa ona bare di ki ki keh sakda eh kehna ki ki kave ona bare ona di ona di music di depth bare jehde padde han ona nu pata hai aur har chapter vich ਕੀ 뮤직 ਦੇ ਐਸਪੈਕਟ ਆਏਗਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਚਮਤਕਾਰ ਕਲਗੀ ਦਾ ਚਮਤਕਾਰ ਵਿਚ ਐਵਰ ਚੈਪਟਰ ਯੂ ਰੀਡ ਸੋ ਯਾ ਆਈ ਨੋ ਦੈਟ ਸਰਿੰਦਰੀ ਬਟ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਦ ਵੇ ਇਜ਼ ਦੈਟ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਵੀ ਆਲ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਨਿਕੀ ਵੀ ਵੀ ਰਾਈਟ ਪੋਇਟਰੀ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਰਾਈਟ ਪੋਇਟਰੀ ਆਈ ਰਾਈਟ ਪੋਇਟਰੀ ਬਟ ਦੈਟ ਸੈਂਸਿਟਿਵਿਟੀ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਵਾਂਟ ਆਰ ਪੋਇਟਰੀ ਸੰਗ ਇਨ ਦੈਟ ਰਾਗ ਔਨ ਥੋਸ ਨੋਟਸ ਵਿਚ ਆਈ ਫਾਉਂਡ ਵਾਸ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਥਿੰਗ amazing and it was taking it to a different level that that's how i that he wanted it sung but surinder ji you know i've had i've been receiving a lot of uh, messages here that people are requesting that pdf so if i may whenever after the webinar if you could send us that pdf Absolutely. we will send that to all our listeners so that they may also have it uh because there are quite few comments here which i am seeing um and this is also to all the, our audience that is listening if you have any other questions that you would ask like to ask the panelists please go ahead and put it in the in the q and a section and i will get to them um you know nikki there are so many dimensions of this of pedagogy but it is this and his writings and 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 i'm not even going into his work in the in the social fields and the institutions he set up because that's i don't want to cover that today i'm just focused on his writings um if there was one particular from this vast repertoire of writing if there is one something significant that has impacted your life personally you know that one thing or that couple of things that has made and you would want to share that with your audience that would be great we need that impossible task <laughs> his poetry is what i must say uh, has drawn me and surinder uh, rani rajkors i mean that's a whole chapter in my book the feminine principle you know where i do the mystical journey the five kans of the japji sab elaborated through rani rajkors journey you know so i i i totally so it could be the khans i mean i i really don't know where to um and um his point this from the you know my cosmic symphony was like taking his earliest poems and his last final poems you know meri sanya jio so there's lots in i i'm totally at a loss i don't know every every bit Uh, you know i pick up is there something inspirational about it um i think it's the momentum the poetic momentum the language it just puts me in my world you know i i have to admit i came to america when i was very young i really did not have anybody to speak punjabi with and his poetry kind of just sustains me any 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 bit well um how about we look at um 
one poem and that's maybe that goes with my uh what did i say that um i made my seven points his contemporary significance and one area i did not mention was our everyday life because we to be in the moment that's mm -hmm. very important to pai veer singh you know we are always here we are today what are we thinking about lunch time later i will do this or i didn't do something so it's either regrets or future what about the moment now and he has there's a little poem bijli on the har which he gave uh the second aj should, should i read it please huh? please but uh, uh, nikki if huh? you're going to read it but then you need to also translate it because i know there's an audience there uh, who okay. might be able to appreciate that so you know we don't need word but, but the essence okay. of it the, the essence basically is um uh no i i want to read you it it's just so beautiful no i want you to read it but then also explain it to us so simple it's a simplicity you see that's what draws me it's not you know kal chuki hai beet vaston dur nasai you know so yes yesterday has gone okay i'll read my english translation what no, i no 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 i want you to read your you, i want to read the original but also then explain it to us uh, okay but anyway so it, it's really yesterday is gone far out of our control tomorrow is still away not yet in hand today today is with us and what do we do it you know fill it filled with worries though caught up in yesterday and tomorrow we let today go for not so hold on to today tightly let ambrosial elixir sip it slowly absorb it get high on it immerse yourself in its divine radiance so that's really the message you know so rather than yesterday tomorrow to be in the moment and that's what we hear which we do, cannot do if you want to find bliss if you want to find joy it is really to experience right now the presence and he's making us he's ma he's drawing our attention and so nicely you know how can we what can we do about yesterday it's gone why regret why worry i didn't do that i didn't do that or i should have done that and tomorrow is far away it's not in our control so this is what we have make the most of it and this is for my youngsters for my students for each of us you know at any stage every day hold on to today get high get high must you know to to be high to be intoxicated life is intoxicating sip it slowly go slowly relish it relish it and that's what you know that's a whole guru granth sahib right guru granth sahib thal vich tin vastu payo sat santok vichar you know here is the platter with sat santok vichar je ko khave je ko punche tis ta hoy udhar so we have to not just eat it go to mcdonalds and gulp things down savor savor that knowledge savor the truth the knowledge that's been given savor the contentment and reflection that's very important so what you're doing in need the way you're bringing people together is really important because we need to reflect we need to go to these texts otherwise they're there so and that's to get high on it absorb it absorb, drink it make it a part of your body here again the body comes up you know all the five whatever seven eight points i made they're all visible right here absorb it take it in inside you you know in in your body make it a part of your blood stream this is knowledge just not up here get high on it enjoy it that's the whole aesthetic immerse yourself in its divine radiance and that radiance the divine the oneness get immersed in it so if you could just think of it every moment how good it would be so that's my little message uh well nikki the chat box has lighted up because the audience wants you to read it in punjabi so please kal chuki hai beet vaston dur nasai talak aje hai dur nahi vich hatha aayi palak aje hai dur nahi vich hatha aayi aj asade kol vich par fikran lai aj asade kol par fikran lai kal palak nu soch aj vich muft gwai kal palak nu soch aj ਇਹ ਮੁਫਤ ਗਵਾਈ ਵੀ ਲੈਟ ਇਟ ਗੋ ਫਾਰ ਨਾਟ ਹੈ ਸੰਭਾਲ ਸੰਭਲ ਸੰਭਾਲ ਇਸ ਅਜ ਨੂੰ ਹੀ ਇਸ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਅਸ ਥਿਸ ਇਸ ਥਿਸ ਇਸ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਆਸਕਿੰਗ 
ਹੋ ਸੰਭਲ ਸੰਭਾਲ ਇਸ ਅੱਜ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਬੀਤੇ ਮਹਾ ਰਸ ਪੀਂਦੇ ਆ ਇਹ ਬੀਤੇ let it pass maha ras pindya the great elixir let it go let it pass let it let it let it move with everything maha ras pindya har ras vich matte har ras vich har ras vich matte 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 get intoxicated with divine ras 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 uh um, which matte khiviya har rang har kirat chaundiyan with you know immersing in its chaundiyan with in its radiance that's how we should be so i really uh, oh, one one thing um, so this is this is it and my basic one yes i should have mentioned which i love from day one i don't know i still remember i don't know where i read it wah uh, wah choj tere mere saiyan wah wah choj tere mere saiyan tere geetan diyan tainu vadhaiyan tu ho geet sangeet ਤੇ ਸਵਾ ਤੂੰ ਹੋ ਗੀਤ ਤੂੰ ਹੋ ਗੀਤ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਦ ਸੌਂਗ ਤੂੰ ਹੋ ਸੰਗੀਤ ਤੂੰ ਹੋ ਗੀਤ ਸੰਗੀਤ ਤੇ ਸਵਾਦ ਰਸ ਰਸਿਆ ਤੇ ਆ ਪ੍ਰਸਾਦ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਵੇਅਰ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਗੈਟ ਥਿਸ ਇਨ ਇ ਟੈਲ ਯੂ ਡੋਟ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਹਾਈ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਲਿਟਰਲੀ ਹੂ ਥਿੰਕਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਥੈਟ ਹੂ ਰਾਈਟਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਥੈਟ ਐਂਡ ਇਟਸ ਥੈਟ ਥਿਸ ਕੌਂਸਟੈਂਟ ਫਾਲਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਲਵ ਓਵਰ ਐਂਡ ਓਵਰ ਅਗੇਨ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਟਸ ਵਾਟ ਹੀ ਡਸ ਟੂ ਮੀ ਇਟਸ ਲਾਈਕ i cannot believe this he's done it again he's done it again he's done it again you know and and that's where you know this this journey from from pai vir saying to pai sa pai vir saying and now it's just that he's just my pedaji and that's that's the end of it so sunji you know you tell me tell us about you but what is it that what particular aspect of his writing has moved you and just you want to share with with all of us I think the aspect of, of course it other than chamatkars and everything but I want to start off with saying that ki gurbani which according to the you know jo gurgan sahib maharaj the jo spirit what is that is ki the goal of human life the purpose of human life is that before you leave this world you you know your creator you know naam na relationship to adi bane and gurgan sahib maharaj di bani vich one of more thing is important though is we believe that you need jude hoye jude hoye in the sangat jude hoye in the satsangat when you when you hold their hand is the people who get you there and i think his the work that he did on santhya i think that is i think the probably the most important dane that he has to the panth and to the entire world or jinane people who have not read that and will leave this world without reading that will will have missed out i cannot even tell you what you guys have missed out on that santhya is something is so special especially the the annotation of jabji that he did in the beginning it is so full of love itni depth hai us samjhan vich to me he is like somebody who is who will who will con- who connects you to a kalpurk vaigru and your guru so that your purpose of coming here and let me remind the audience who's listening today ki gobind bhajan bin birthe sab kaam you know jont kirpan ke nirarth dam so you we can read we can do we can do hundreds of seminars we can ultimately you have to listen to what paisa pai veer singh ji's writings reflect upon which is you and what nikki ji said a second ago which is to get connected with that divine spirit oh hai naam and um, since nikki ji read it let me let me just read out two sentences from santhya and i want to read a lot more but uh, in ji you said ki punjabi chat doga na samajh aaye but i just want to give you an example Minnery. of love that reflects in santhya do so surinder ji can you read but then also explain Okay sure sure but inni koi mushkil nahi hai but people will understand the here is explaining he is explaining jabji diya oh line you know such na vadiyai vichar amrit vela such na di ude utte commentary hai you know vai kya vich te likhe han ki us vich oh ik premi no is prakar di taqeed karde han ki dekho kadachit bani visre te bani got mata di hai नाम तो जरा शोक कटे 
ਛੱਟ ਬਾਣੀ ਸਹਾਰਾ ਦੇਵੇਗੀ ਜੇ ਬਾਣੀ ਛੱਡ ਬੈਠੇ ਤਾਂ ਕੋਦ ਅਲ ਚੁੱਕਰ ਵਾਲੀ ਕਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਹੱਥ ਪਾਓਗੇ ਬਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਗੋਦ ਵਿੱਚ ਨਾਮ ਨੂੰ ਖਿਡਾਓ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਪੁੱਟ ਇਟ ਬੈਟਰ ਥੈਨ ਦੈਟ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਹੂ ਕੈਨ ਹੂ ਕੈਨ ਹੂ ਕੈਨ ਸੇ ਐਨੀਥਿੰਗ ਬੈਟਰ ਬਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਗੋਦ ਵਿੱਚ ਨਾਮ ਨੂੰ ਖਿਡਾਓ ਜਦ ਕਦੀ ਫਰੋਟੀ ਲੱਗੂ ਜੋ ਜਗਿਆਸ ਨੂੰ ਅਨੇਕ ਵਾਰ ਲੱਗਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਤਦ ਬੜੀ ਬਾਣੀ ਬਚਾ ਲੇਗੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਉਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਕੋਈ ਠਾ ਕੋਈ ਠਾਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰੇਗਾ ਇਹ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਵਡੱਪਨ ਹੈ ਸਾਡਾ ਇਹ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪੈਸੇ ਕਮਾਉਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਇਥੇ ਦੇ ਦੇ ਇਨ ਹੀ ਵਾਸ ਨਾਟ ਅਜਕਲ ਅਜਕਲ ਦਾ ਬੁੱਕਸ ਆਰ ਰਿਟਨ ਆਨ ਯੂ نو ਹਾਊ ਮੈਨੀ ਇਟ ਸੈਲਸ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਰੇਟਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਐਂਡ ਹੂਸ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਰੀਡ ਇਟ ਐਂਡ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਟੈਲ ਯੂ ਇਨੀ ਜੀ ਕਿ ਜਬ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਐਨੋਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸੰਥਿਆ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਈ ਹੈ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਲੀਵ ਥਿਸ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਿਦਆਊਟ ਰੀਡਿੰਗ ਥੈਟ ਅਗਰ ਇਫ ਸਮਬਡੀ ਡਸ ਨਾਟ ਹੈਵ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਟੂ ਰੀਡ ਦ ਇੰਟਾਇਰ ਜਬ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਐਨੋਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਅੱਜ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸੁਣਦੇ ਪਏ ਹਨ ਮੇਰੇ ਹੱਥ ਜੋੜ ਕੇ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਅਗੇ ਰੀਡ ਦੀ ਐਟ ਲੀਸਟ ਦੀ ਮੂਲ ਮੰਤਰ ਦੀ ਐਨੋਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਦ ਪਾਈ ਸਬ ਡਿਡ ਯੂ نو ਯੂ ਵਿਲ ਗੈਟ ਕਨੈਕਟਿਡ ਜਸਟ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਵਰਲਡ ਇਕ ਓੰਕਾਰ ਦੀ ਐਨੋਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਤੋਂ how beautifully he explains brings in so many things from different places together and one more thing energy i want to point out and is very important though and you said that in the very beginning when you started saying that the how is his writings relevant today how is it, how does it resonate to present world paisa is the only author that i know of and i have read many many translations of gurugansa maradi bani diya who has a special section on after every commentary door and is called sadhan pak which is sadhan pak mane sadhana da pak keda why do i have to say ek onkar again again what is the benefit of saying nirvair nirvair again and again what is the benefit of saying saibang again and again and paisab has a special section after every one and he explains the benefits and uh, to end the whole thing uh, santhya de first volume the dr balbir singh and the brother last meeting that he had before he passed away there is a energy there is a difference between explaining gurbani and difference between experiencing gurbani you know there is a difference between understanding what the words mean did he and 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 writing it down what it means and there is a difference between will you have lived that is a big difference and there is a punjabi word as you use karde hain bada us word da na nig hai nig as nig punjabi the word it's hard to explain that in english the closest word i can find is probably warmth you know but is way more than the warmth the dr balbir singh ora ne santhya de pehle mukh band vich ohna di ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਐਨੋਟੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਨਿਗ ਮਿਲਦੀ ਹੈ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਦੀ ਵਾਰਮਥ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਆਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਅੱਖਾਂ ਚ ਅਸਰੂ ਆ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਹਨ ਢੁੱਲ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਹਨ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਜਪਜੀ ਦੇ ਵਰਡ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਮੂਵ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਨ ਰੀਡ ਹਿਸ ਐਨੋਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਔਨ ਦੀ ਅਮੁਲ ਵਾਲੀ ਕੋੜੀ ਦੇ ਐਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਰੀਡ ਹਿਸ ਐਨੋਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਔਨ ਵਾਟ ਹੁਕਮ ਇਸ ਐਂਡ देयर इज नो वे यू विल नॉट गेट कनेक्टेड so to me the most important work that he has ever done better than any chamatkar series or any poetry because as a sikh sab to vadda jada role jada hai ki o tonu connect karan aaye han jan parupkari aaye han o tanvant kulvant patvant han o us roop vich aaye han sant roop vich yes kavitaavan likhiyan han yes natak likhe han ਨਸ ਯੈਸ ਫੈਮਿਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਦੇ ਤੇ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਹੈ ਚਮਤਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਸੀਰੀਜ਼ ਲਿਖੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਸੂਰਜ ਪ੍ਰਕਾਸ਼ ਨੂੰ ਐਨੋਟੇਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਆਏ ਹਨ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਜੀਵਨ ਸਫਲ ਕਰਨ ਉਹ ਆਏ ਹਨ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਲਾਈਫ ਤੋਂ ਅਗਲੀ ਲਾਈਫ ਤੇ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਉਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਐਂਡ ਸੰਥਿਆ ਇਸ ਸਚ ਐਨ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਪਾਰਟ ਇਨ ਥੈਟ ਦੋ ਮਾਈ ਆਈ ਡੂ ਨਾਟ ਹੈਵ ਵਰਡਸ ਦੀ ਟੂ ਐਕਸਪ੍ਰੈਸ ਗ੍ਰੈਟੀਟਿਊਡ ਮੇਰਾ ਅੰਦਰੋਂ ਦੈਟ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਟ ਪਾਈਸਾਬ ਹੈਸ ਡਨ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਇਹ ਸਾਡੀ ਬਦਕਿਸਮਤੀ ਹੈ ki we don't read that most tik sangat is probably not aware of that but jehde padde han jehde jehde karde han oh connect hunde han aasa di war di annotation jabji sahib di annotations anand you know uh, unbelievable work and unbelievably emotionally written work you know this i remember you know from the same day when i was uh, when i was uh, when i had tried to attend to 
<clears throat> look at the Lama Bani and the Uthaknan. I read the essay, which was before the Lama Bani. And I, that essay was so powerful for me. I mean, in one line, in a couple of lines, and this is a thought, and I'm paraphrasing, which he, which he writes. He says, you will not be able to understand the beauty of Gurbani, the, the, what the Lama truly means, until you don't understand what the position of the woman was, is. He said, Aurat, jut, uh, is this, it would, thale, you know, this, she is the soul of a woman, of, a, of the Jutti. You still take the Jutti and you take it to the house. You leave it outside the house, but you go in. So the, 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 the shoe can be seen, but the sole of the shoe is never seen. It's only used. And he said, that is the position of the woman. Now, when you look at what Barney has done, what the Guru has done, and what the Lama is in that light, you will be able to understand the depth of Barney. And then at the end of this Uthakra, this essay which he writes, and he said, Lama is the Barney, is the diamond that cuts, that pierces every other Barney. So I am still trying to get the grasp of what is it. I don't, I mean, I have written about Lama, I have translated it, but I know categorically I am not at that stage where he is seeing that this is that diamond that pierces every other diamond. I am nowhere there. And I remember when I was, I had finished working or not finished, I had said, okay, I've, I've studied Sid Ghosh in with him. And I'm saying it was just an incredible two and a half year, two and a half or three year journey. I said, I'm going to put the book down. And as I was closing it, my eye left went on to the right hand side of the page and it was the Lama Bani. And just in the word, pehel, no, har peheli lang, that word lang, which I understood as round, he had like an eight line meaning of that word. Correct. Just like, what? And I was back to that place. So his. Santhyas are, but those are for the seekers. Those are the ones who really want to understand and want that sweetness, that depth. It's a stretch. I mean, Serenity, I can tell you, it is literally, uh, when you are absorbed in that, you don't know, din rat, you forget. You don't know it's day, it's night, you are hungry or not. Everything just goes away, and that is what your focus is. But I have a question here, which is a very important question, and I think, Nikki, you would probably be the best to answer that. How would you categorize Paivir Singh's literary, literary journey? Are there distinct chronological phases in his writings, and how do we see him develop spiritually through his life? This is Guru Karan from Seattle who has asked this question. I really am not. Uh, I'm not an expert on this. I've just been reading his poetry. I know the early poetry. There's something very simple, um, beautiful about it. And then later on, you know, when I look at Mary Sanyajiyo, it's much more philosophical, and it changes. It just, it's just much more complex. But I think the strain, the same uh, vibes are there throughout. And I think it's like, you know, all of us, you know, we, do we really change? Do we really transform? I mean, he had such a wonderful childhood. You know, both his grandparents were so scholars, totally immersed in the Sikh world. So he was, he just kept absorbing more and more and more, I would say. And then he went into the novel phase. Um, I mean, it, I think one of the earliest things was uh, Rana Surat Singh, which he completed in 1905. And then came a whole whole set of short poems. 
And those are very beautiful lyrics. And that's what I have been looking at. And then towards the very end, you know, and is Merisanya Gio. But I see the same, to be very honest with you, you know, his aesthetics is the same, his philosophical world becomes a little more complex, but I cannot see any, this, you know, no, no real points, uh, which I can, that, that's me. I really have not worked in, on his biography. So I, my dad, I like to, yeah, go ahead. No, I like to add something after you're done, Nikki. No, 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 go ahead. No. No, no. So just chronologically, but he's also one of the few authors didi on this to see chronologically gal karde pe si gurbani diyan de he wrote two one santhya series came later earlier in his career you know he wrote a book called panj granthi shtik you know there there is there is another book that he wrote on jabji the annotation so there are two jabji's annotations by sab wrote one in the panj granthi shtik which was written approximately 20 years pehle and how he has developed from the Panj Granthi Steak to the Santhya, he criticizes his own work. I just, I just, he criticizes his own work in Santhya and said, Nay, Panj Granthi we stick in the Likyasi, but I've changed my mind, I've grown. So, yes, there has been a progression, you know, from the articles in Chamatkar series to Lake. Santhya probably was one of his last one because he, he couldn't finish it. And that's why we have those three small books where you read the Lamadiya translation, Santhya Nek Baniya, you know, which, mm -hmm. which is after the Sorat Rag, the Agge Jada portion did I have. So yes, he is one of the few authors who has written on a single subject matter probably multiple times. And he goes back and he discusses that and says, pehle, but I think I was wrong. I think this is better then. So that is also takes a lot out of you, Didi to say that to, 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 to it about yourself, you know, and says that about him also a lot. So. You know, I, I, it, it, about a couple of years, I think three years back when I was at the Paivir Singh Southern in Delhi, uh, I was speaking to the director, Mohinder Singh, Sazar Mohinder Singh Ji, and, and he says, Any, I have some great news to share with you. And I said, what is it? And he said, we have just found um, his notes, his translation of Homer's Iliad. I said, what? Yeah. It's me that. And I was like, I cannot believe this. And, and I said, you have just found it? He said, yeah, we just discovered it. And I was like, when are we going to get it? And he yeah. says, we just take your time. You know, we're going to put it out there in the in the Kalsa Shamachar. We're trying to figure out how to do it. But the man and that's what it is. He knew there was so much that we don't know. And yes, with all his writings, all what he's written, there's still a lot we don't know. But it is Nikki, what Nikki said, you know, he connects you. You know, Nikki is through her, the poetry that speaks to her. Yes, for me, it is also through the poetry. But for me, it is also that he actually unveils each Gurbani principle and gives it to me. This is the way you need to think about it. This is the way you need even in love. And, you know, in the, is this only, I think for me, there was a lot of, is there, is there only divine love? Can we experience divinity, that divineness in a human love? And Nikki, you've talked about that in your poetry. You write about this, the ishq, Part. Can you explain that? And he very much in in him, I have found, and I've also probably experienced the divinity of love in a human relationship. And it was actually through him that I was able to see that this is possible. Very much so. So Nikki, is there anything there that you want to talk to us about on that point? Yeah, and I think I see a question too, uh, uh, Gajinder's question. Uh, in his book, Mere Sanya Jiya Pai, Veer Singh writes, Supne Vich Tusi Mile Asanu, uh, Gal Vakadi Pai, please share us with us Pai Veer Singh's love for Vaheguru. So that's exactly what you're asking. Um, that's what the question is. We're all thinking together here uh, collectively. So that's what I'm saying, that the raison d'etre from the beginning to the end, the whole poetry is about love. And it's really the love for the divine. 
whether we experience it today, whether we experience it through art, but that's where he's taking us. And the one, it's it's really comes to ik onkar, the divine reality is one. And that one is cosmos, whether it's the skies or the lake down here, the birds, uh, whether it's um, the little tree or the rose uh, that is talking with us. It's all a part of this multiverse, this very pluriversal <laughs> reality. And vah, 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 guru is really the wonder of it. You know, the whole mood of the Guru Granth Sahib is this enchantment, vah, vah, the, the beauty, the greatness of the divine one, our creator who made us. So ishq, muhabbat, pyar, rang, I mean, there are infinite names for love in, in, in Pai Veer Singh, and he's really emulating the Guru Granth Sahib. I'm not, I, I don't think it's emulating. He's really absorbed it from day one. So it's a part of him part of his being and that's what comes out so whatever each of the poems whether he's whether it's a veena player or ras rasiya rasal i mean that's guru nanak Ape ras, you know guru nanak has that same verse i've done it my all my uh, hermeneutics of uh six scripture that's what i call pai veer singh these papers have been published these are articles published in volumes so um to me uh it is really the divine love that he's expressing in his poetry, all of his art, all of his, uh, whether it's a secular poem, sacred, there's no such distinction. We talk, oh, this is, and, and that love does not end. What does divine love mean? Let's think about it. It's just going in that direction. No, it is coming to fellow beings. You know, I, I'm reading, the, by the way, I love the Sakis, little, little Sakis. I'm reading the B40 Saki and Guru Nanak is totally saturated with the divine love for the divine one. As soon as he sings his Shabbat, he goes out to feed Langar. So the, the love, the love is not out there. See, this is what I, I, that's something I feel the Sikh world, we really need to connect. It's not going out there. It's coming here to our everyday world. It's yeah. biophilia, bio, bio this world. It's other traditions that kind of, oh, you know, look after death and so forth. And your your attention is given to the heavens out there, which means you don't give a damn about the planet or your fellow beings or what happens to you can kill 3000 people only because you can go and have your, you know, you can meet with God out there in the heavens. This is not Guru Nanak and this is not Pai Veer Singh. So Inni, your, your, your uh, issue about love, love for the divine opens us towards love for everybody. <laughs> For each other here, for the flower, for for nature, for that for child, for for my students. So that's the love we talk about, and that's something we miss, and that's something there's always fear. Any karna, oni karna. The whole thing is about love. This is our tradition. This is our legacy, and we have really overturned it. And I don't know where we get those fears and phobias, which was to get rid of all that. And when we are, when we love, love is true. It's passion. This and is what was gonna, give yeah. to us. So I As don't add, yeah. the sacred and the secular, the division, that duality, that polarization does not exist in Sikh scripture. That was not Guru Nanak. What happens is later interpreters, exegetes who were not that liberal, who could not understand, they are the ones who are creating these codes and codifications and, and, and really twisting his words and his message. So instead of openness and embracing everything, it's like, you know, we have to do this and do's and don'ts and there's no do's and don'ts. And it's when we love, everything opens up. We do, we do our best. That's where things come from. Sat, truth. And if I may add one more thing to that, though, is what Nikki ji said right now is that Gurbani, which the both forms have been accepted, as Nikki ji pointed out, the Sargun form and the Nirgun form. If one without the other is 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 incomplete. And again, if somebody really wants to learn more about what Nikki ji just talked about, the love, read his annotation on the Ekum Karwale, those 20 pages in Santhya. And you will see that what what the nirguna form is though, which is the internal thing and the external part, which is seva, which is all over Gurbani, which is in the which is in the oankar part of the pala one hai jada, dusra jada word hai jada. That is what the this sargun part is, and Paisab explains that in Santhya. 
and one without the others is is incomplete in gurbani you cannot love god without loving everybody around you every part of nature every part of his of his creation and it is reflected in his in his writing is reflected in gurgan sai maradi bani but uh, uh, yeah so i just want to add that yes both forms are important both loves are important in the nirgun and the sagun form here so so if i may say then so he continues his fragrance continues he continues to inspire the well-being actually of the individual and when the individual and the humanity yes very right in it absolutely we cannot divorce the two you know the individual is, that's where the ego comes in and the 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 opening towards humanity is that love for the divine for fellow beings for nature for absolutely for women men and women equality not you know so it's it's really kind of it's an expansive absolutely feeling and doing he's it's 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 just not you know thinking or feeling it's it's a doing and that's why the seva that you bring up uh, surinder is very crucial that's yeah. that part of us langar seva all these are you know divine and and just think of naam daan ishnan naam is remembering the one that's the love for the one daan is kind of geared towards society and ishnan is the person the individual you take cultivate yourself so it's it's self cultivation social engagement and the divine and these are three interconnected there's a semiotic relationship amongst the three not either this that no and we really need to we, this is the message of pai veer singh and this is the message of the gurus and we really need to experience it you know we talk about things we discuss it and it, it, each of us and this gives us power this gives us confidence this is who we really are and gives opens us up to fellow beings we live on we live here on in the west we meet christians and hindus and muslims and people from all walks of life and we should be open to them absolutely because this is our message one us does not subscribe to the sikh world or the punjabi world and that's why i think his you know whether he uses the bible or the sufis or uh, upanishads it's it's and and the guru granth sahib too hindu muslim sikh gurus all a part of the sikh scripture we Absolutely. really have a very liberal very pluralistic uh legacy and we need to get a real to be really in touch with it absorb it as he says absorb it live it be high on it you know from aj you know nikki you mentioned naam danishnan and i want to pick up on that one just a little bit. we have a little bit of time left but um in canton 30 to 32 of rana surat singh this is this beautiful explanation of naam dan and ishnan and he takes you on this journey of what dan is through the intellect through the buddhi through the ru through all that right and he does that for naam and he does that for dan and he does that for ishnan and i was reading i was just reading something last night and there's a sentence which he he says naam tanu something to the effect naam connects you to vaheguru dan connects you to the world and ishnan connects you to yourself exactly that's what i said yeah and it was like and you said it today and i was like last night i read this and it was mind blowing that this ishnan is actually within that cleansing within and until that cleansing doesn't happen nothing flows but so simply and so beautifully put that these are the three things you're going to live in this world these are the three, and without and he then writes without these three these are the three things that you need to live in this world to actually radiate in this world and i was like that was my last night and i'm like can i just say that this was mine two nights ago when i was reading the b40 janam sakhi that's where it was it kept coming again and again in the sakhis in guru nanak mentioning that again and again so it's so this kind of really connects by we're seeing how close he is to the gurus to 
the sacred to our history Absolutely. to our literature to sikh scripture so it's it's a real this is really kind of the connecting point yeah. and that relates to how, why we relate so easily and quickly with him you know so it's it's like knowledge coming so thank you any that's really really oh, interesting you thank know? you both of you you know how could i i mean this, this incredibly naive far off person be so intoxicated uh, in love with him and to celebrate the day of my pedagogy with two people who love him as much as i do there's nothing thank better you. nothing better than that and i want to thank the two of you for humoring me and you know to be with me on this thank day you. and really sharing with our 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 sangat i hope our audience feels that we just didn't speak amongst ourselves but we really do love his work and uh, he's made a tremendous impact i know on each one of our lives so nikki we have a little bit of time we just have about 3 4 minutes left any passing comments thoughts which you want before we wrap up uh, you know for our audience for you. so or if you want to read a couple of lines of his work i'm i'm just whatever uh, we'll read a little bit on the kheda uh, oh, what the, uh, where is it mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, eh, eh, by the way, um, somebody had asked the question about Baba Chow, Tere Mere Sanya. It's in Rasrasya Rasal. That poem. Uh, that's to answer a question here. So this is the poem, uh, Jeevan Ki Hai. You know that Inni made me reread. So this is what I was reading last night. So here is a woman in agony, and finally she gets the answer. And so this is Pai Veer Singh telling her, Kheda Te Appa Ik Hoye. Lunu gai proi, kheda te appa. Kheda is that blossom where she sees those flowers blooming on the lake, a whole total blossom. Nothing is apart. They're all one. And here, seeing that, she herself becomes one of them. Lunu gai proi, lunu. You know, every little pore of her is beaded with that. Kheda dilda, kheda dilda, the blossom of the heart. Kheda tanda. blossom of the body kheda server wala kheda of that lake that sab khede ik roop ho gaye khede panniyan paala sab khede ik roop ho gaye ik roop ik onkar ik roop ho gaye sab khede tan da dil da lek da appa sara kuch ik ho gaye khede panniyan paala all these borders of gender and race and ethnicity and cultures and religion खेड़े पन्निया पालना हेठा ऊपर चार चफेरे की अंदर की बाहर खेड़ा खेड़ा हो सारी की बातन की जाहिर खेड़े खेड़े वर्दी आ गई बाहर एनीवे इट कैन गो ऑन एंड ऑन देयर इज नो डिफरेंस इट्स दैट दैट रियली मैसेज ऑफ वननेस एक ओंकार गुरु नानक्स रेवलेशन सीइंग दैट वन रियलिटी दिस इज व्हाट ही गिव्स अस एंड यू कैन पिक अप एनी पोएम दैट्स व्हाट वी गेट सो वेयर देयर आर नो बॉर्डर्स देयर आर नो डिविजंस एंड this is the world he opens up to and so inni once again thank you uh, for really celebrating it to be able to thank you didi thank you for having us and thank you for really talking idea. about him you know so it's myself i i need to open up to the prose of pai veer singh you know i've been kind of focused on the on this side surinder ji thank you thank you thank you for having and um, i just whoever is listening you know i just encourage everybody ki tusi ek mauka deo ohna nu apni life nu badlan da you know and he will he he has that ability to bring the guru closer to you you will he, and often he uses a word uh, gunan chamatkar the earlier chapters which he recall it ki sikh da jeevan hazuri wala hai what is a hazuri he uses that word a lot hazuri is somebody hazuri means in presence you know yes and if more you read about him the more you read his writings toada apna jeevan hazuri wala hoega you will feel guru nanak closer to you you will feel kalgidhar pita closer to you you will feel that jabji is closer to you you will feel asa ki war di bani is a part of you with a closer to you. and that is what a gursikh is supposed to do that is what sangat is that is what 
Guru Arjan Dev Ji talks about again and again in Sukhmani, you know. The more closer to come to, to his writings, my life has changed forever since I was in my 20s, you know, and my children, I see reading him and I see my daughter going through that, that, that transition and using his work to teach his classes, her classes in English, though. But all I want to say is, though, that if you want to get closer to your Guru, if you want to get closer to Gurbani, if you want to get the warmth of Gurbani, if you want to get the nig inside and Hazuri Wala Jeevan, if you read his works, you will you will find him. You will find Guru Nanak very close to you. You will find Galgi Darpita very close to you. So close that you will be might be able to touch him. Una 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 di una di andarli atma no tu si chhu sakde una di itna closeness tam nazar aayegi. A meri hath jod ke binti hai sab no. And did I want to go ki I want to some people complain ki kya meri nahi samajh aniya jo too difficult. You can give my email address out. Let them reach out to me. I will explain them. I want even if one person, if I'm able to convince. And I always say this because some people say they're very busy. And I say if you're very, very busy, and let's say you only have one book to read before you die. I say one, I have only time to read one book. And that book will be Guru Nanak Chamatkar. You know, and if you have two books, then it's Kalgi Dar Chamatkar. If you have three, then start reading the Santhya series. But a uh, meri hai ki get get by getting closer to him, you will bring Gurbani and your gurus very close to your heart. Ona di nig, ona nu, ona di atma de darshan tano karan gaye ho, or tadi life forever will change, forever. And uh, that's all. And thank you for having this thing. Thank you for having me here and saying my two words. And I'm so glad to meet Nikki ji for the first time. Thank you. Same here. Yeah. Thanks to Manvinda for organizing us. Thank you, Manvinda. We wouldn't be here. I would not be here. You know, um, I want to leave before I pass it on to Manvinda. There was, um, you know, there were lots of people who wanted to come and see him. You know, constant stream and he met people at a certain time. And he would tell people that you don't need to come and see me. That's if you right. want to meet me, you will. I will meet you in your my in your, in my books. That's right. And that's exactly what happened with me. And as my aunt tells me, you know, because um, she said, "Tu kithe jami pali?" And where would you have things? She said, "But you've met him." And that's what he would say. He said, "You actually, the way you, your life has turned out, has made Pitaji's words real to me. That people will meet him in the book." Absolutely right. So Absolutely. that's what I'm saying. So I met him through his books, nothing else. And sure. Manvinder, on this note, may I pass this on to you? Because we could continue on and on. But I know we have a time limit. And I want to thank Nikki uh, so much and Surinderji for just thank a spectacular you. hour and a half of celebration. Thank you. Manvinder, thank you. Thank you so much. I definitely cannot follow up or summarize this truly delightful conversation. On behalf of Sikri, I know everyone has kind of already said their thank yous, but I'll extend a thank you as well to all of today's wonderful panelists for their insightful um, conversation. I truly appreciated being a fly on the wall in this very impassioned conversation, and maybe even impassioned is um, yeah, not encompassing of what I got to witness today. Um, I know in the comments there was there were questions about a recording for this webinar. As always, a recording will be available within 24 hours. And just to wrap today's conversation up, I would like to remind everyone that we will continue hosting our webinars in the new year. This is um, the last one of 2020, but keep an eye out for our first webinar of 2021, where we will be joined by Harinder Singh and guests to discuss the farmer protests against new agricultural laws in Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, and throughout India. And lastly, don't forget to tune into the Sikh Cast, a podcast produced by Sikri, where we explore the various issues and events affecting Sikhs worldwide. Thank you again, everyone, audience, panelists, for joining in today. Today's webinar will be ending now. Vaigriji Kalkalsa. Vaigriji Kalkalsa.